What's up y'all, it's Nar, and welcome to another training session with me on my channel, Play Lion Chess. Today I have something that I'm super excited to share with y'all, but before I do, I did want to encourage y'all, if you like my content, please consider liking the video down below as well as hitting subscribe, and also following me on Twitch to see more of my live streams. I will be adding the link in the description down below. Cool, with that said, let's get right to the action. Um, today what I have in mind is I'm going to be doing for the first time ever a blindfold session. So I have uh, with me an actual blindfold and I'm going to be wearing this while playing against the computers on leechess.org. I'm going to start with the level 1 computer and then work my way up depending on how I do. Cool, let's get right to it then. Do it. Okay, alright. Cool, so what do we start with? Uh, my strategy for this, I think, is to just steer the game in positions that uh, favor me as the blindfolded player. So I'm going to try to follow the, the kiss rule, keep it simple, stupid, um, and just you know really try to play positions where I can build an advantage that is extremely simple, extremely is easy to visualize the pieces. So uh, that said, let's get started. I am concerned about my, my finger failure. I'm not sure my computer uh, skills are good enough, but let's try it. If there's a... A, a typo or something, whatever, we'll just live with it. Okay, there's already a typo. Let's see, okay. Okay, I'm really at a loss. Okay. I typed in a lot of stuff. Um, okay, let's just go for it. E4. E6. Okay, so we get a French defense on board. And... Um, I'm going to play the most aggressive version. No, I don't want to get something super sharp, so I'm going to try to play something relatively simple. Um, and I think I'm going to try for an exchange French. That is one of the setups that's a little bit more dry and symmetrical. D4. So D4. C6. Okay, so he's going super passive, basically baiting me into um, getting a nice center. So let's just develop Knight F3. Knight F3. Knight f6. Knight f6. So right now my pawn on e4 is being attacked. And I could defend it in a couple different ways. Bishop d3 or knight c3. Um, let's maybe start with the developing move. The one that gets me one step closer to castling. Bishop d3. The other nice point about this is uh, line myself up in the future for e5 advances that hit his knight on f6. And if that defensive knight has to move, there could be tactics in the air like bishop takes h7, uh, king takes h7, knight g5, and um, bring out the like puzzles section. Because, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a checkmating net. But let's just baby step it for now, bishop d3. Bishop d3. Knight a6. Knight a6? Oh, Alright, I'm not sure what that move is. I guess it is threatening to maybe go knight b4 and disturb my harmonious bishop on d3. So I think c3 is a desirable move. Anyway, it just reinforces my central structure. So let's get that move in. c3. b5. Okay, this is a lashing out move. I think I can just take it. It's a free pawn. So um, yeah, if I take that pawn, right? Oh, no, 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 I'm crazy, I'm crazy. He didn't play d6 in the opening, he played c6. So this pawn is very well defended. His pawn structure right now, if I'm able to visualize correctly, he's got pawn on c6, pawn on e6, pawn on b5, and pawn on d7. So it's kind of like a Nike swoosh. Um, he's also got a knight on a6, knight on f6. And as for my pawn structure, it's c3, d4, e4 pawn structure with a bishop on d3 and a knight on f3. So bishop takes b5 would be a horrible blunder here. It would just be losing the bishop for sure. So glad I, I double checked that um, in my mind. Um, all this said, mm, we could try to break down the structure. This is a bit loose the way he's played on this side of the board. We could play a4, but also we could just hold that move in reserve and just castle. So let's do that. Uh, looks like I have some finger failure. Okay, let's type it in properly. Okay, something's wrong. Short castle. Short castle. Yeah, also, I, I wear glasses, and I have uh, pretty pretty bad eyesight, so even if I take these blindfolds off for a hot second, I'm not going to be able to really tell what's going on on the board, so don't worry, I'm not I'm not cheating in any way. But let me actually take a quick look at the chat, see what's up. Uh, oh, damn. I, I, I'm sad that your brother didn't, uh, didn't get to play blindfold with you. That would have been fun. 
that would have been pretty sick. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for that uh, shout out, Proobs. Appreciate it. I really appreciate all the support that you you've shown me the past couple, past couple days. All right, let's get back to the position. I think he played h6 in response to my move castles. So now I have uh, a setup where I'm fully developed, except for my queen side. I don't have my knight on b1 developed. I don't have my bishop on c1. But this guy's taken so many liberties with all his pieces. He's you know really just making a bunch of random pawn moves that don't really seem to be contributing to his actual development. Mm, I think I can also expose him in the sense that he has weakened a lot of his dark squares. Like right now, that Nike swoosh thing has created a bunch of holes on the dark squares in his positions. Um, so maybe let's just start with e5 to just ask his knight, what, it, what are you doing? Like, why are you crazy? Okay. All right, I keep typoing, which is a frustrating part e5. of this. But let's see what he does. Knight h5. Knight h5. Okay, so he has put his knight on the rim. And you know what they say about a knight on the rim? A knight on the rim is dim. Um, a knight on the edge is... Yeah, I don't have any word that rhymes with edge, unfortunately. So I'm just going to have to go with the cliche. Okay, knight h5. What do we got? What do we got? Um, I do have my queen staring down that diagonal. And right now that knight is undefended, I believe, because we have a pawn on e6 pawn on d7 and um is like what would what would be on that diagonal h5 we got g6 f7 e8 and on e8 is his king okay so anyway they would be undefended um that knight is you know dangerously short on squares so if i play a move like knight d2 that knight from h5 sorry knight i should be clear knight f to d2 not knight b to d2 if I move my knight away, my queen on d1 is now hitting his knight on h5, and the knight from h5 can't go to f6 because my e5 pawn defends it. It could go to f4 though, which is a bit of an annoyance. Um, by moving my knight from f to d2, I have taken away my bishop's eyes from c1 to f4, and so it can yeah it can ease it can easily use that square and then maybe reroute itself somehow. Um, all of this being said, I mean, maybe I can play this move and then after he goes knight f4, uh, play g3 and then try to trap it somehow. But as I'm saying this, I think I've also, by playing knight f to d2, uh, weakened my d3 square. My queen no longer has sight over the d3 square. And therefore, he is going to be able to make use of that square when he can uh, jump. So, okay, all of this said... Let's maybe baby step this process, not allow him to get to that d4 square. And let's start with, uh, uh, sorry, to the f4 square. And let's start with bishop e3. Bishop e3. Bishop e7. Bishop e7, okay. So he's finally noticing that he needs to get some development in. But what's the story here? Can I not just play knight f to d2? And he's forced to play something hideous like... Um, g6 i think is the only move that can defend that knight knight cannot go to f6 it cannot go to g7 cannot go to f4 because it's covered by my bishop and so if he plays g6 mm, okay it's not quite working out with bishop e2 um, i wanted to basically just win that g6 pawn basically take the knight have him take back with the pawn and then win it with queen takes h5 but he has a g7 square available for his knight once he plays the move g6 so it's not all working out just yet um, meaning, mm, well, there is another idea, which is I could lash out, go ultra crazy and play g4. I do believe it's winning me a piece. Um, that knight is trapped. And of course, if he plays something like g6, I win the knight for a pawn, very favorable. By the same time, it's kind of, well, from a blindfold perspective, especially suicidal, I have, mm, lost all, like, all control over the position and I have no idea what's going on anymore with g4. Um, in the back of my pocket this is probably what the computer is going to say is the best move at the end of this position but um, practically speaking I feel yeah I feel like it's going to be hard. So let's look for some other idea in the position. Mm. We could play knight f to d2 and after g6 play f4 try to get our pawns rolling and try to steamroll the guy. Yeah, I, I do kind of like this approach. And then once he's played g6, maybe I'm less 
you know, maybe I can mm, afford some G4 move later on because well, I have my own attack attacking prospects with two pawns advanced. So let's try. Let's try it. There's also a chance he blunders, so I'll give him the chance. Knight F D two. D five. Okay. All right. I'm talking like this guy is a super grandmaster, but he's actually a level one computer. I just need to make sure that I'm not blundering anything. I have a pawn on e4. d5 doesn't attack anything else. My bishop is not on c4, it's on d3. So I can afford, I believe, to take on h5, and nothing is guarding it. Um, just sanity check it. Where is his light square bishop? It's still on c8. c8 cannot control h5, it's, it's not on the right diagonal. So, okay, I believe it's working. Queen takes h5. Okay, I can't type. Queen takes h5. Okay. Let me take also this opportunity G6. to check out the chat, see what's popping. Sorry, it's like I'm literally waking up every time I take off these blindfolds. Um, the Nike swoosh, yeah. It is It is exactly what it is. I guess not anymore with this d5 advance. Um, Alright, I don't know why Nightbot is spazzing out against Pretzel Rocks. Pretzel Rocks is the... Uh, the license free music that's going on in the background is just sending music, so yeah, kind of not really sure what that is about, but okay. He plays g6. Um, I have a bishop on d3. Unfortunately, I cannot line up some bishop takes g6 tactic just yet because I have a pawn on e. F oh no, I don't. I have a pawn on e5. So I can take on g6 and basically say, okay, black king, not only have you lost the knight central defender, or sorry, a key defender, but also your position is like, mm, yeah, irreversibly exposed. So let's do, let's, let's, let's do it. I mean, what, what is the harm, right? We can maybe checkmate the guy. Mm. What else should I think about? I could backtrack with the queen. Mm, it seems less fun. Okay, whatever. We live once. Let's just do it. Bishop takes g6. Rook b8. Okay. All right. Uh, am I checkmating the guy with bishop f7? Uh, not quite. He can run to f8. Okay. Also, where where is the guy's pieces? Let me just take a sanity check. He has a knight on a6, which is really random. Bishop on c8. Um, bishop on e7. And that's all of his minor pieces. Heavies are on a8 and a... No, sorry, not a8. He just moved to b8. So it's on b8 and it's on h8. And now instead of a uh, Nike swoosh, he's kind of got like a, I don't know, like a little wave thing going on. It's like a, it kind of looks like the messenger logo, the Facebook messenger logo. Um, what to do? Let's take on f7. It's a free pawn, I think. It's not defended. So. Bishop takes f7 check. He's got to move the king f8. King f8. You know, there's got to be some checkmate coming into it. Um, the downside is this e6 pawn is no longer defended by a pawn, but it is still defended by the c8 bishop. So I can't just take it for free. Um, that said, all of my pieces are lined up for some you know beautiful attack. You know, can I play something like knight g5 from f3 to g5? And if he oh no no, no sorry my knight is on d2 now, so I can't do any of that. That's a whole. Uh, an oversight. Maybe it's time to get my bishop to safety and not be scared. I could also try something like f4 and try to checkmate the guy. Yeah, I'm I'm attracted to this because f4 I can play mm, f5 and use the pawn on e6 as a lever to open up the f file and try to checkmate the guy. So let's do that. Um, f4. F4. It's nice. Knight c7. Knight c7, okay. So he's double guarding the e6 pawn now. <clears throat> but, okay, it doesn't stop my f5 plan. I'm still going to be able to open up the file. The reason I'm happy to play f4, aside from the, the chessboard move, uh, the fact that it's good on the board, is also f. the f on my keyboard has a nice little groove. So I know exactly where it is and I'm not going to typo, um, which is always a nice feeling. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, f5 is not being stopped by whatever he did last, so let's go for it. f5. Bishop a3. Bishop a3. Get some water. Bishop 
Bishop a3? Is that a move? Don't I have a pawn on b2? Also, I have a knight on b1. What is this move? It's just a free piece, no? Uh, that said, do I even take it? I mean, I can take f takes e6 and, and checkmate the guy, right? Why, why go after some pawns? Sorry, uh, why go after a piece when I can just win it? Uh, win the game itself. Let's do it. F takes e6. Knight a6. Knight e6. It went from knight b8 to a6 to c7 to a6 this game. Uh, somehow not very convincing. Okay, there's, tech, there's checkmate in the air and I can feel it. It's like one or two moves away. So if I play... Ah, uh, okay, this is cute. I think I have bishop e8 in this position okay and it's defended by my queen so he can't take king takes e8 also there's a rook on f1 that's staring down his throat so it's a it's a check that way and he has to move the king um so i don't think there's anything he can block with mm, even if there is i'll probably just be able to win it for free um so i'm not going to bother too much with that but he can probably move to g8 or g7 if he moves to g8 or g7, I believe in both of those cases, queen f7 is checkmate. Queen f7 is really cute because um, the king on g7 is shouldered by a rook on h6 and a pawn on h8. So I believe it's uh, like a curious case where he can't go to the h file because he's just got those two pieces like, you know, right in his way. So let's do this. I think I am... Let me just make sure the rook is on f1. If I'm if the rook is not on f1, then I'm losing a piece. Because you can just play queen takes e8. Okay, bishop e8. There's nothing in the way. Yeah, there's nothing in the way. Because I was able to push my f pawn up the board and take it. So nothing is in the way. Does he have something on f6? No way. If he has something on f6, then you know my queen would be in danger. So okay, let's play bishop e8. Bishop e8 check. Okay, cool, it's a check. King g7. King g7, and cool, we get to show the cool mate. Queen f7, checkmate. Queen f7, checkmate. Checkmate. White is victorious. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Oh, I feel like I'm waking up in the morning and everything's so bright. Cheers, Snedseg. Uh, sorry, what was it that your name meant again? It was Swedish for... Sorry, I don't even remember. Was it Was it Swedish? Let me know. Yeah, it was something really cool. I remember um, 45 was, you know, trying to remember it too, but it's slipping my mind right now, unfortunately. Hey, Snoozy. Yeah, let me know. Are you are you watching the game in, in the blindfold mode or are you watching just live on the stream? I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing since you're saying you're not able to keep track, it's because you're watching in the live stream itself. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for the the compliment, Proobs. I appreciate it. This one was, yeah, I was really happy that I was able to show this beautiful checkmate on board. Um, pretty cool. Just live on the stream, yeah, for sure, for sure. Blindfold is one of those skills where, yeah, you just gotta work on it, right? It, um, I think it starts with being able to, strangely enough, identify what color all the squares on the board are if you're able to know what color the squares are you're naturally more able to tell like what stuff is on what diagonals and for instance like very quickly tell okay like f4 is a dark square but he, he can't attack it with his light square bishop because it's a dark square so yeah i mean it's just a skill to work on i am far from anywhere good um the the craziest guy that i, I know of is he, his nickname is the Blindfold King in the chess world. Chess world. His name is uh, Timur Gareev, and I, I got to check this later, but I think he did something like a simultaneous blindfold exhibition. He played like 90 games at the same time, blindfolded for 24 hours straight, while biking like 20 miles, like biking 26 miles on a bike or something. Something insane. Like this guy is like the most unreal set of like combination of things that you could imagine um but that guy's a beast yeah he's a beast and he talks about how blindfold chess is you know the greatest thing that you can do to improve your tactical calculation and um gotta say like i yeah i can't disagree with him it's really hard to do this but okay enough ranting um i will take a quick look at this but 
yeah, definitely anyone in the chat, um, Snedstek, Proobs, Snoozy, let me know if you want to play a game. I'm always down. You can challenge me on Lee Chess, if you have a Lee Chess. Um, you can challenge me on Lee Chess using the instructions provided in the, uh, the Nightbot command challenge. So you can find more information in the chat if you just type in uh, exclamation point challenge and um, yeah, I'm, I'm ho always happy to get in a game. You'll probably destroy me, um, but it's always good. Let's take a look. So let's request the computer analysis. Okay, so I've already made a mistake according to the computer. But let's just play through it and see if I was able to visualize everything. So he played a French. E6. D4. C6. With a C6. Yeah, this is a slightly strange setup. Um, it's definitely kind of playable, I guess, but it's not saying I want my fair share of the center. Normal French would be with D5. Um, the people that I D4. see with offbeat French variations usually go for B6. Uh, maybe we could even throw in an opening explorer here. Let's see, this guy. I think, yeah, B6 is one of the rarer openings, but yeah, if you're not fighting for the center, at least you want to get this bishop on this diagonal quick. So, C6. C6 it already doesn't like much. Knight F3. Knight F3, Knight natural. F6. Bishop D3, Knight A6. Okay, yeah, very strange Knight A6 play. C3, B5. See, and this is what I was pointing out in the game. He has all these dark square weaknesses, right? He's created this Nike swoosh. So all of these dark squares can no longer be guarded by a pawn ever again. And I think part of the strategy that I could, you know, implement is uh, focused around targeting these. Maybe like even something like Bishop F4 and King and on all these squares. But short castle. Yeah, just development H6, in the game. E5. And this H6. is the, ch the chance I wanted to strike. He has neglected development of the king side, so I wanted to expose uh, him early by driving his pieces to strange squares where they are vulnerable to tactics like we saw in the game. E5. Knight H5. Okay. Bishop E3. Bishop E3. Okay. Bishop E7. Bishop E7. And yeah, yeah, I, like I was saying in the game, G4 was the G4. move computer wanted me to play, Bishop but... E7. I lose total control of the position, and in a blindfold game, this is, yeah, a bit ridiculous to play. So, I don't think what I did was that bad. What did I do? Knight FD2. Yeah, I'm just lining up for some tactics here on h5. Yeah, it's not very convincing, um, but... D5. Okay. Queen takes g6. And is this move sound, taking on g6? Bishop takes g6. Okay, not even close. Um... G6. Okay, yeah, maybe it's a bit silly. I also in the game failed to recognize that he could go this way with the king. Um, so maybe that is the line that I was thinking was if I take Bishop takes G6, take F takes G6, Queen takes, um, Queen takes G6 check. After King F8, I might have something like Bishop H6, uh, and winning more material by forcing his king to a square where he has no legal moves except to capture the Bishop. Takes H6. Um, king d7. But on king d7, yeah, it's he's weaseling out of the situation, and strangely enough, this like weird formation is a very good shelter for his king. And now I've kind of like yeah, I've rebalanced the material uh, e inequality. So okay, let's keep going. What else we got? I don't really think there's much more to look at in this this game. Yeah, I just I, I would like this F4. idea f4 to create a lever to open up this rook. Right, I, I saw that he was kind of vulnerable here, and I wanted to really break this open. And I think he went like, Bishop yeah, I don't know what this move is. This is like F5. the strangest Bishop move A3. in the position. Just can take it, right? This way, this way. Or you can try to keep mating him, but okay, cool game. Uh, definitely was a good uh, warm up to get the juices flowing. But yeah, let me check if anyone's anyone sent a challenge my way. I don't think I see any. Yeah, I don't think I see any. Um, okay, yeah. So if not, I don't see any challenges. Um, you can challenge me if you uh, type in exclamation point challenge in the chat. You can send a, a challenge my way. I'm going to try to only do uh, non-rated games, like casual games today, because I don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to tank a bunch of rating points. Um, not that it matters, but 
Uh, since I'm actually focused on improvement and stuff, I want to make sure that I get good metrics on actual progress and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna just play casual games. If you send a challenge my way, I'll for sure accept it, no problem. And if not, let's go into a, a second game and let's play a... Mm, I don't know how to up the level, maybe like one or two levels. Thanks for uh, thanks for the compliment, Chess V. Appreciate it. Very fun game for sure. Um, okay, maybe let's let's go up two levels. Let's play a level three computer as opposed to level two. This is going to be, I think, a significant increase. Level one guy was playing seemingly random moves almost. Um, but level 3 I think will have some method to the madness. So, okay, I'm gonna get right into it. And I got my blindfold on. It's very disconcerting, by the way, to go in and out of like the, the blindfold mode. It's just, the lighting difference is just so stark. But, hey, I mean, it, it's fun, so let's do it. Level 3, and let's go with a random side. Game start. Okay, I got white again. I don't mind that at all. Um, let's take off these glasses. And let's get a quick drink of water in. All right, time to go to war. Let's see. Okay, where's the enter key? Here it is. Okay, let's play a D4 game maybe. Maybe it'll get us into positions that are a little less tactical. D4, E6. Okay, and as I say that he wants to go into another French or he's basically daring me to play e4. Um, yeah, there's a funny quote, which is, if you're playing someone and they play d4, you can win a psychological battle by playing e6. And if they don't play e4, which is you know, theoretically the best move in the position to go into a French type position, if they play c4 and go into like a, a traditional queen pawn game, um, yeah, basically you can already say like, I gave them a chance in the position to play the best move in the position and they didn't do it they didn't do it so i can basically say to myself okay this guy is um yeah not as incisive as they could be they're kind of focusing in and have maybe have a little bit of tunnel vision but um yeah i am for the sake of variety since i played d4 i'm gonna play a c4 game here um yeah i mean maybe the computer thinks that i'm a i'm a scrub but okay i don't mind c4 queen f6 what these moves um I don't know what that move is. That's that's really, really bizarre. Uh, generally, you try not to move your queen this early in the opening. It's just going to be vulnerable to tactics and stuff. So, yeah, I don't I don't mind this in the least. But maybe he has some concept behind it. Knight f3. D5. D5, okay. So, we have some confrontation in the center. My e4 pawn is attacked by his d5 pawn. And I'm at a crossroads on what to do with it. I could either defend it in a uh, in a way where I commit a piece to defending it, like bishop d3 or knight c3, even queen e2 or knight d2, um, or I could push it. And by pushing it, I would also be hitting his queen, uh, which is you know strangely positioned on f6. So I feel like if I wait, what am I talking about? I'm not I'm not playing an e4 e6 game. See, this is blindfold for you, right? I thought I was playing a French. Somehow I just told my, myself in my mind I was playing a French. But no, I, I haven't done that. I've I've gone for a d4, d5, c4. Um, so basically transposed to d4, d5, c4, e6. And after that, knight f3, queen f6. So, okay, totally got to readjust my mind. Yeah, that's a funny feeling. Um, okay, definitely threw me off. What to do, what to do. So I want to get started developing, I guess. So potentially play e3 and bishop takes c4 if he takes there. But also another idea in the position is to play bishop g5 and that queen is, you know, pretty short on squares. So the only squares that I can see the queen going to after I play bishop g5 are g6 and f5. And neither of those squares seem like a permanent residence. They can be harassed if I defend my bishop and then maybe play like knight e5 or something. He could, the queen could really get under fire. So, uh, I mean, what's lost? Let's just ask the question to the queen. Bishop g5. Bishop g5. Queen f5. 
Okay, he goes to f5. Somehow this feels like the even looser of the squares and the worse. Um, from g6, she could uh, keep an eye on g2 and maybe bother me in terms of my development. I can't develop my light square bishop so easily. But from f5, it's not only... Uh, yeah, it feels less defended from that square, but also it doesn't feel like it's generating as many threats. So right now I'm seeing some, you know, opportunity to play e3, bishop d3 perhaps. Um, that could be nice. But the queen could still weasel into g4, which is slightly annoying. And maybe my bishop on h6 becomes... Okay, I'm never going to lose him. Um, but maybe he has to, you know, they play bishop e7 and trade the piece or something like that. If I'm not crazy, that would threaten a trade. A, a trade if they played bishop e7. Okay, got to find a way to trap this queen. I, I really want to punish the way that Black has played. E4 is not working because they have a pawn on d5 and also could take with the queen. Can I attack it with the knight somehow? If I play something like queen d2 to guard the h, sorry, to guard the g5 bishop, and then after that, I'm threatening knight h4. Yeah, I'm threatening knight h4, and the queen at that point has only a couple squares. They have e4, g4, and e4, g4, and that's it. So if they go to g4, I can play h3. If they go to h5, I can play g4 then, and I'll trap the queen. And if they go to e4, I can always force them back onto the g4, h5 complex of squares by playing knight c3. So I think I'm going to be able to trap the queen. The only question is if I play queen d2, they could play bishop e7. And I'm not sure what I've accomplished because... Um, yeah, because if I trade, then the queen gets access to f6 square and I'm never really going to trap it. Maybe this whole approach about trapping the queen is just like way off and um, I'm asking for a little bit too much in the position. But yeah, I think it's good for tactical vision anyway. So queen d2, let's say I play bishop e7. How about I play h4? But am I threatening anything? Because I'm not, because I, I no longer have the h4 square for my knight. So all of this seems... All of this seems a little much. I am going to scrap everything and go for e3 and just say I'm going to develop my pieces. If I miss something, I miss something. e3. f6. f6, okay. So queen is still kind of ridiculously short on squares, but um, yeah, my bishop is kind of not the greatest piece any either. Um, it's outside of my pawn chain, so it's no longer hemmed in, but... It doesn't have many legal squares to move to, only f4 or h4 right now. And both are conducive to another move like g5 and g4, and my pieces get placed on the back foot. So yeah, uh, maybe not the most convincing, but let's try bishop h4. Four. Bishop h4. Knight d7. Knight d7. Hold on. They haven't addressed the queen. Can I not do bishop d3? And queen has only one square from f5. Can't go to f4 because I have the pawn covering that square. Cannot go to g6 because the bishop attacks it. Cannot go to f6 because there's a pawn there. g5 taken by the bishop and knight. Sorry, attacked by the bishop and knight. H5 is also legal, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take a quick pause here. Actually, just check the chat, see what's up with y'all. Um, let's take a quick look. How am I going to read the chat? Yeah. Sorry about that, but <laughs> it is what it is. I, I'm not Superman. I don't have some invisible superpower or whatever, but this is how I'm reading the chat. I got to take the blindfold off and check it out. Hey, what's up? What's up? By the way, who... Who are you? I'm, I'm actually not sure. I can't tell by the username. I am from my past. Okay. Seems ominous. I've been taking breaks and reading in between. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for covering for me. Oh, yo, what's up? What's up? 
We should definitely get in a game. Yeah, send me a challenge. I'm, I'm happy to play Theo. Nice to see you on the chat. All right, all right. So let's get to this. You know, I am ready to cook this guy like he's, uh, yeah, like he's toast. Ready to eat some bread. <laughs> okay, he's on f5. Can go to g5. Sorry, can go to g4 or h5. Mm, I can, instead of playing bishop d3, I can play h3 and g4. And in that way, I have taken away both both squares, the g4 square and the h5 square. So he can play something like knight g6, but it's not quick enough because I can get in my g4 move. And um, if he plays queen e4, I do have bishop d3. And I think queen go bye-bye in that position. I think so. Okay, let's try it. I, I, think, uh, I think there's something here. H3. D takes e4. Okay, that move scared me. Oh no! That pawn was on d5, right? So now the queen is escaping. Oh man, he's slippery. He's slippery. Uh, slippery guy. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, I mean, the good news is my position is not bad. Uh, I'm not losing or anything. Famous last words. But no, I, I don't think I'm losing. I haven't done anything, yeah, horrible yet. So let's just go on with bishop takes c4. Bishop takes c4. Knight b6. Knight b6? Is that a move? Oh yeah, the knight was on d7, I see. Okay. My bishop is harassed. Should I play bishop d3 maybe? Force the queen to d5 or... Sorry, if I'm like right up in your face, by the way, I have no depth perception either. Um, d5 or... C5 taken by my pawn, B5 taken by my bishop. So if I play bishop d3, they only have queen h5, in which case I'm trapping it with g4, or they could go to d5, or they could go to a5. And I think that's the end, like full stop of where the queen can go. So queen d5, I can harass it more with knight c3 and development, yada, yada, yada. Queen a5, maybe bishop d2. So I'm not seeing any reasons to not play this move. Anyway, my bishop has attacked, so I got to do something or another let's try it bishop d3 queen h5 whoa 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 oh i'm not trapping it if i play g4 i'm just weakening my light squares and then the queen is going to juke me and go to the uh, other side of the board a5 or d5 and what have i really accomplished other than turning my king side into swiss cheese not really much i, I would say so okay okay all right fair play um what to do though you know they haven't developed they haven't developed a lot of pieces hmm there's got to be something in the air what if i play something like bishop g5 cutting off the queen from going back to the other side of the board and then i play g4 i think it would work except for the small detail bishop g5 h takes g5 g4 and then the queen is weaseling out to h6 and f6 and yeah, one day e7 or running back home to d8. So, hmm, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And my knight right now on f3 has a defensive responsibility of the bishop on h4. So cannot go on some adventure with the knight. I really want to just cut the queen from coming back. G4, yeah, not convincing, not convincing. Okay, let's just develop, maybe. Uh, nothing's hanging. I don't think not I don't think anything's hanging. So, I guess if I play knight c3, they're gonna play knight g6 and pester my bishop a little bit. Put it on. Put it on g3, but is that so bad? I I don't think so. Okay, let's just make a move. Knight c3. Bishop d7. Bishop d7. Is this attacking something? d7. Okay, so this is the, the queen side bishop. Okay, it's not attacking anything, I don't believe. Uh, my knight is on c3, bishop on d3, knight on f3, bishop on h4, 
pawns on d4, e3, and then no c pawn, and all the other pawns are back home. And I think every other piece is on its home square except I'm quick, uh, kingside castled. I think I can remember all that. Um, yeah, I mean, this dude is still not castled. He's still not even gotten the bishop. Not only has he not castled, he hasn't developed his uh, b bishop from f8. And also, he is not even ready to do that immediately. He has to play knight g6 um, to do that. But, I mean, yeah, he can play knight g6 uh, with tempo on my bishop on h4. So, I guess there's that. Okay, what to do, what to do, what to do. Yeah, mm, where's this other bishop? Uh, where's this other knight, rather? Oh, no, 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 wait. Am I right with this? He played knight b8 to d7 to b6. Okay, so he hasn't... Yeah, he hasn't gotten that knight off of e7. I think it's still there. What about his pawn structure? He has a pawn on e6. No pawn on d5 because it just took on c4. And what about the c-pawn? I think the c-pawn is still back on its home square of c7. That one is a bit of a head-scratcher, I'm not sure, but... Okay, what to do, what to do? Mm. Yeah. Let's try... Hey, can I do something like knight e4 to g3? Knight e4. Uh, maybe if I play b4 right now, oh my god, maybe if I play b4, I'm taking away the a5 square. The d5 square is taken away by my knight already. <laughs> no. Can this work? b4, queen can't go to d5, can't go to h5. Sorry, it is on h5. Can't go to a5, I mean. Can't go to d5 or a5. Cannot go to f5 because I have a bishop on d3. Can't go to g6 for the same reason. No, but it can go to h6. Ah, no, 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 no. That's not fair. I wanted to play uh, b4 and then play g4 and trap the queen. But the queen still has the h6 square, which I'm never going to take from it. Okay, okay. So time to just play some sane move again, I guess. Um, what is not developed? Um, my bishop on d2 is not... Uh, and c1 is not developed. So maybe play something like... Mm, hold up. Can I play e4? Is that a move in this position? They don't have a d5 pawn, so that is some desirable central control. I think that's a good move. If I can play it. If it's a legal move. I'm weakening my f4 square, but I can always play bishop g3 to cover it. Okay. Bishop on d7. Is it going to c6 next? I think it might. It might. And then it could put pressure on that. But I can meet that with rook e1, also have a knight on c3, and maybe I can play for some d5 break as well. Okay, I like this, I like this plan. e4, let me just make sure I'm not blundering anything. I don't even know where this pawn is actually right now. It's on e3, I think, right? Okay, am I blundering the d4 pawn? I don't believe I am. It's got enough defenders. Okay, let's do it. What? Why is it not typing? E4. Type it in. Um, yeah, while I took my blindfold off, Bishop let me just take e4. a look at the chat as well. Hey, yeah, yeah, definitely send that challenge my way, Theo. If you're uh, if you're down, I'm down for sure. Okay, what did this guy do? He played E4. Bishop B4. Bishop B4. Okay, so it's attacking my knight on C3. What do we got here? Huh? Wait, is that move legal? What? How is that legal? I thought he had a knight on e7. Okay, I gotta replay a bunch of moves. I'm not exactly sure how this bishop got to b4. f6. Okay, f6. Bishop h4. Knight d7. H3. D takes c4. Bishop takes c4. Knight b6, bishop d3, uh -huh. queen h5, yeah. knight c3, okay. bishop d7, e4, bishop b4. Wait, I missed it. What? 
Is this knight never played to e7 this whole game? I could have sworn it was on e7. Let's go all the way back, sorry. Game start. d4, e6, c4, queen f6, knight f3, d5, bishop g5, mm -hmm. queen f5, e3, f6, bishop h4, knight d7, h3, d takes e bishop, knight Okay, wow. Bishop b4. Wow, okay. I think this whole game I thought he had a knight on e7, and I played a lot of my strategies around the fact that he was so underdeveloped, he had to get that knight out of the way, maybe kick me on g6, but I was just wrong. I I think this whole time I was thinking that he, when he played knight d7, he had, I guess I had both d7 and e7 squares in my mind, because they sound similar. So, okay, okay, all right, this is something that surprised me. Um, bishop b4, okay. No threat per se, but he's just getting on with development. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing too bad. What to do? Could get on with develop my own development. Rook e1 is a move that speaks to me. Bishop f4 maybe to play against the c7 pawn, I think. The c7 pawn is right now hanging. a knight on b6 can that jump to somewhere no okay c4 is covered by my bishop <laughs> okay the visualization is getting exponentially harder i feel but i think i know where the heavies are so bishop f4 wait what am i talking about i have a bishop on h4 that bishop is developed long long ago oh man um okay visualization skills definitely not up to par okay so that bishop is long long gone it's on h4 it's sitting over there Okay, all right. Maybe I can play something like queen to b3 and ask the bishop, are you really ready to give yourself up for a knight? Giving me the two bishops. I like that. I like that plan, yeah. And it is a legal move as far as I can tell. And cannot be harassed just yet because his knight is not on c6, so can't go to a5. But his knight is on b6. Okay, okay, okay. I think I have a general just. Okay, let's go for it. Queen b3. Queen a5. Queen a5. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Can I play a3? And mm, if he trades a bunch. I have the two bishops, first of all. Um... Secondly, I have a decent center, and I can look forward to an open B file. If he plays bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, queen takes c3, takes c3, I have the open B file to target his stuff on the queen side. Um, yeah, that being said, his his piece is a nice defender that uh, knight on b6 is uh, clocking up that file, so maybe something else is in store. What to do, what to do. So what if I move my knight to e2, maybe, let's say? And now am I threatening anything? Am I threatening something like, I don't know, a3 and harass the bishop? Uh, not quite, but I also do like the idea of getting out of any uh, opportunity to trade. It does give me more, it gives his pieces less harmony. So if he plays knight e7, for instance, after knight e2, and I play a3, and something like bishop to d6. Yeah, I, I already sense that his pieces are a little bit funky. I could play e5 perhaps, kick the bishop to uh, basically kick it off of the f8 to a3 diagonal, 
and then maybe there's some chance where I take on e7 and yes I've given him the bishop pair but he has to take with the king and he's uncastled and I'm better developed you know everything is ready to strike into action yeah it's a it's an it's an idea like whether it's strong or not I think it's uh, still to be determined but let's try it what all right, I can't type. Knight e2. Knight e2. Is that not a legal move? What? Knight e2. Okay. All right, what is going on? Did I not? Hmm. Why can't I move this knight? Hold up. All right, I'm going to go through the moves again. C4. E Back to the very, very start. I'm not even sure how many moves I'm in. Game start. D4, E6, C4, Queen F6, Knight F3, D5, Bishop G5, Queen F5, E3, F6, Bishop H4, Knight D7, H3, D takes C4, Bishop takes C4, Knight B6, Bishop D3, Queen H5, Knight C3, Bishop D7, E4, Bishop b4, queen b3, queen a5, queen a5. Oh my goodness. I think in all of this um, enthusiasm to try and trap the queen, punish him for not being developed, etc, etc. I think I haven't castled myself. And therefore I think the, the knight on c3 is pinned. Yeah, it's pinned. Wow. Okay. This is a, a revelation for me. I thought I was castled a long time ago. So now seems like the time to do it. So let's castle. I'm not dropping a knight on c3, right? I have the pawn on b2, so I'm I'm good. Okay, let's castle. If I can type. Okay, I can't type. Why can't I castle? What? I don't understand. Is something wrong? Why can't I castle? O dash O. It's supposed to be castle. Okay, something's funky. Not sure what's up. Let me just type it in. Or maybe I'll make the move. I can kind of I can kind of see the board, but I can't see enough that I actually know what's going on. So I'm just gonna make the move actually. Short castle. Okay. G five. G five. Okay, let's play bishop g3, only move. Bishop g3. Rook c8. Rook c8. Um, he has a c-pawn on board, and I think that's why he has played bishop g3, to defend the c-pawn. Yeah, this computer, I'm not sure how strong it is. It sounds, maybe it's like a 14, 1500 rated computer, but it's, yeah, I mean, the way it's playing, every move seems like it's, got the concept of a super grandmaster behind it. I, I feel like I'm so in the dark with what it's trying to do. I think this is just a purely defensive move with C, uh, defending the C7 pawn. Maybe, maybe one day looking to play C5 and break. You know, black has less space in this position because I have that nice central duo. So maybe black is trying to liberate their position a little bit. Okay, um, I do like this concept of knight e2 though. Knight e2 and play for a3 and trap that uh, or basically harass the piece. Maybe I can later follow it up with some something else. Something where I yeah, I'm I'm failing to find a good concept. The, the knight just doesn't feel good on that square, right? If I play knight e2, e5 would never be good because then they could break c5, and also black hasn't yet committed to anything, so. Okay, I think knight e2 is actually good because it temporarily prevents black from playing knight e7, which is a desirable move to get castled. But that being said, the, the reason it prevents knight e7, I think, is because I could play a3, and a bishop does not have a good square to go to, so it's going to be lost. But could they play knight h6? Is that a move? Knight h6, 
Yeah, but what is what is so good about that, right? I have I have a pawn on h3, so they can't jump to g4. I have a pawn on e4, so they can't jump to f5. It's literally an awkward move that they have to make to castle. So yeah, I mean, I think there's enough reasons to to like this move. Also, another nice benefit of playing knight e2 is I open up the c file. Um, I don't, I already don't have a pawn there, and I can maybe look to play rook a to c1 or rook f to c1 and really target that c7 pawn. Also. Um, you know, stopping any idea that black has to make a c5 break, maybe it would be uh, trapping black's own bishop or something like that. I, I really like this idea. It's a very good, what we call a prophylactic move. It's uh, seeing an opponent's threat to, you know, develop the knight from f, uh, from f8, sorry, from g8, or um, break with c5, and we are putting a stop to both of those because I think a3 would... Uh, be hard to meet in both cases, so let's do it. Knight e2. Bishop okay. d6. Bishop d6. I'm gonna take a quick pause just to check out the chat, see what's up with y'all. Okay, not a lot going on right now. Let me know how you guys are keeping up with these positions. They're quite, uh, yeah, quite chaotic for me at least. But d6? I thought this was not a square that he could go to. Um, from g3, my bishop is looking at f4, e5, and g6. So is that not just a free piece? Oh, no, 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 no. There's a pawn on c7. Okay, okay, that's the that's the concept. So could I play e5 maybe? And yeah, I am asking the bishop once again, where do you want to go? But the good news is... Well, they have to answer that question, and there's not a really good answer. E7 takes away uh, takes away that square for the knight, but it can go to H6 and F5, I guess. Yeah, I think there's enough reasons for me to play E5. This structure is very favorable for me. They're undeveloped, and once again, like in the last games, I have ideas of bishop takes H7, knight G5, um, checkmate threats. So let's do it. Why not? Um, wait, one reason to maybe not do it is I give their uh, knight the d5 square. And that's not a desirable square to give up. You know, that knight right now on b6 has no future. And I'm giving it a, a square on a silver platter. But... Okay, they cannot do that because I have a queen on b3 and it's staring at the b7 pawn, so that's hanging. Okay, so let's play e5. e5. Bishop f8. Wow, that move is crazy. All the way back home, now they have two more moves to make before they can castle. And that bishop on f8 still doesn't have a good idea where it wants to go. Okay. Now move like... Knight f4 maybe even is possible, taking away that d5 square. No, 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 no. Have they played g5? They have played g5, so I can't play knight f4. Okay, that would just lose a piece. They've played g5. Oh, so they want to put that bishop on g7. Wow, okay. And doing so, they've really exposed their king vulnerably, um, and for the time being, they're not even castled, so... Things look sketch, um, for sure. How to do this, how to do this. Could I maybe play h4? Try to break at the structure over here? Pawn from h3 to h4? No, I don't like it because then they can play g4 and my knight is not really sure where to go. Could be good still. I mean, I get the knight f4 square for my knight. Uh, okay, let's baby step it. Maybe play rook a to c1. That seems like a good move. Rook a c1. A6. A6. Queen's on a5. Knight is on b6. Okay.
could I play f4? Is that a move? That seems nice, right? I can just start to really question that g-pawn, and if it pushes up the board, well it can't because I have my h-pawn defending the next square. Hey, I love that move. f4 opens up the f-file, starts up some attack. Um, meanwhile, I just need to make sure my d-pawn is not hanging at any moment right now, because if it's t captured, the pawn that's on d4, I would be in check. So I think I'm comfortable enough because I could, if they play, if I play f4 and they try to open up that diagonal, I can always play bishop f2 to shore things up. So I am quite okay with this move, and I don't want to move my rook from f to d1 because I really want that rook on f1 to be there for the action once the f files open. So let's do this f4, f4. It's another move. F4. Why is that not a move? Sorry, am I typing it right? F4. Okay. <sighs> Something's wrong. Where are all my pieces? I have a rook on c1, rook on f1. I have a bishop on g3, bishop on d3, knight on e2, and knight on f3. Okay, that's the issue. I have a knight on f3. So that knight has to move if I want to play f4. Um, okay, lends itself to a plan, actually, I think, to move the knight out of the way and play f4. But where to? If I play to d2, it's hanging, I think. They can just play queen takes d2 and I'm lost a piece. Um, knight h2 seems decent enough. Yeah, and then I have the g4 square as well, maybe jump into f6. Very nice, I like that idea. Knight h2. King F7. Let me take a quick peek at the chat, see what's up with y'all. Celtics, oh, I, I read that wrong for the second. You said Celtics down 48 to 60. I read that as Celtics down 48 to 0. Um, yeah, that would have been like awful, awful, awful stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the, the message, Mario fan. I'll, I'll check it out. Check it out. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to get a, a good community here, um, people that are like really engaged with the content, but I'll definitely check out what you are suggesting, for sure. Um, so what did this guy play? Knight, king, f7. King, f7? That's not a move. That's crazy. That's crazy. They have pawns at f6, g5. Have I had some bishop g6 in the air for a few moves now? I think so. I think I thought that they had a... No, I can't, because they have a pawn on h7, I see. Well, I think it's, you know, best time to swing through on the plan of f4, breaking the position. f4. King g7. King g7, okay. f takes g5 here, and then they have to take back with the, the pawn. And what to do, what to do. Uh, I can maybe look for... Some... Knight g4 to f6 type stuff. Or maybe I play... Yeah, I like that plan. But is it the most incisive? I'm not sure. Could maybe also consider queen... Rerouting the queen back over? Hang on. Should I be so hasty? I think there's also knight g3 now. No, there's a bishop on g3. Okay. Yeah, I wanted that knight to come into g3 and h5 to, to give some attack on third king, but... Okay, I'm not seeing it, so let's play f takes g5. I don't see anything bad with it. f takes g5. Bishop e7. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They didn't take it back. They didn't take it back. Okay. So I have one upon. Well, that's a good start. If I take on f6 now, they can maybe get developed with their knight, which is mm, something they want to do. That's a fair point. What if I play something like g6? Is that a move? No, then they just take it. I think I'm without a choice. I might have to just take it. Okay. Okay, fine. You get some development in. Fine. g takes f6 check. Bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6. Okay, so they don't even take with the knight. Can this be good? Um, bishop takes f6? 
Don't I have a pawn on e5? Wait, what? Is this just losing? Can I just play e takes f6? E takes f6 check. Knight takes f6. Wow, this has got to be bad. I mean, maybe I can even play rook takes f6 and swing the other rook over from c1 and try to deliver some checkmate. Um, very, very ambitious there. Okay, perhaps. Yeah, I could try that. Um, oh, the other thing that's really cool is I've given the e5 square for my bishop now. So I think bishop e5 is just winning that rook, I believe. So let's try it. Let me just make sure where his knight is. His knight is on b6, so it doesn't defend d5. And I do have a pawn on d4 guarding the, the, the bishop if I put it on e5. So let's do it. Bishop e5. Knight d5. Okay, so knight d5. Okay, so bishop e5 was not a check. Because he has a knight on f6. And he played knight d5 to defend that. Okay. All of this makes sense. Knight d5. Can I not somehow bother it? Hmm. Okay. There's something in the air for sure. Anything immediate. Where's my light square bishop? D3. Could I do something like bishop e4? And then now I'm threatening it. Yeah, maybe. Hold on, I also have knight to g4 here. Right? No, I've already played knight g4. Knight g4 takes f6. Okay. Bishop e4. How about... Queen d1, maybe? No, 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 no. What am I, what am I doing? Can I not play queen takes b7 here? Is that not a move? His bishop on d7, I think, is hanging. Yeah, this is getting really hard to visualize. I'm, I'm losing my mind here. Um, yeah, and his rook is hanging too, I think. Just check where his pieces are. I think he has a bishop on d7. He has a knight on d5. A knight on f6. They're kind of defending each other. And... Yeah, rook's on a8 and h8. No, no, sorry. A rook on c8, not, a, uh, not on a8. Um, queen on a5. I think I could take this b pawn. Type queen takes b7. Queen takes b7. Bishop b5. Bishop b5. Oh, I'm so scared seeing that move. It looks like a threatening move. Wait, I have a bishop on d3. Can I not just win this piece? Is it not just. Oh, no, 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 no. Because he has a pawn on a6. Okay. So bishop takes b5. A takes b5. Can I play then. Also, right now my a pawn is hanging. Bishop takes b5. Bishop takes b5. Queen takes a2. That's gotta be losing. He can't play like this. It's just, he gave up a piece for nothing. So, bishop c4 it is, right? I'm attacking the queen, I'm attacking the d5 knight. Once he moves the queen, I can take on d5, and then the f6 knight will be hanging. So, I'm not seeing it. Let's, let's do it. Bishop c4, queen a5. Queen a5. Now bishop takes d5. Bishop takes d5. Rook cf8. Rook cf8. So he's guarded that. But now I can just come all the way back home with my knight. I mean, sorry, with my bishop. Bishop b1. b1. Is there a knight there? I don't understand. Why can't I play bishop b1? Bishop 
Bishop B3. What? Rook H G8. Okay. I guess I was on the wrong square in my mind. Bishop B3. Rook H to G8. So he's gathering his forces over there. He has rooks on F8, G8. I have rooks on F1, C1. A bishop on B3. A knight on G4. No, no, no knight on G4. Sorry, a bishop on E5 is what it is. And he has a knight on F6. Don't I have something in the air where I can play rook takes F6? And if he plays rook f6, I play rook f1. And I'm ultimately trading a bunch of pieces into a better endgame. I just gotta make sure I'm not getting mated with some like queen coming down to the first rank and checkmating me. So maybe we take a safer approach. Maybe we play queen f3. I like that, right? If that's a move, then I think I'm winning by force because he can't really deal with this pin. Queen f3. Queen f3. King h6. King h6. So I'm winning this bit. knight. Bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6. Okay. Queen d2. Queen d2. Okay, the checkmate is here, I can swear. It's right there. Um, I just can't visualize the board. King h6. What is on... Isn't bishop takes g5? Uh, no. Maybe h4? Queen d2? What is that move doing? Well, it's lining up something with the g2 square, I think. So maybe I can play, for starters, Let's sidestep with the queen, yeah? Um, maybe play queen h3, if that's a move. You know, I'm maybe checking the king and... Yeah, what could go wrong? But where's his g-pawn? Let me just check. Uh, his g-pawn is on... g5, right? I think queen h3. Queen h3. It's not a move. Okay. Why is it not a move? What do I have on g3? I must have something on g3. Oh, I have a pawn on h3. Right, okay. That's why. Um, then can I play queen g3, maybe? I could also play rook c2 and try to swing that rook over. Um, that's a concept. Um, okay, but that queen is eyeing my d4 pawn. It's not a problem because I'm defending it with the f6 bishop. Rook c2 it is. Rook c3. No. Rook e8. I didn't mean to play rook c3, but we live, I guess. Not what I meant to do. Rook e8. No, that can't be good. Can I not just play bishop e5 and threatening queen f6? Let's do it. Bishop e5. Rook g5. Bishop e5, rook g5. h4? Wait, he doesn't have a g-pawn? That's a shocker. That's tough. Uh, Surprise me. H4, maybe, then? 
h4 rook f5 rook f5 okay he attacks it maybe queen g3 threatening checkmate no i can't do that i can't do that because i have a rook hanging on f1 Maybe it's time to play bishop f4. I think I can afford actually even to play queen g3, rook takes f7, rook takes f1, king h2. And how is he going to stop the checkmate on g7? I don't think he can. I'm up so much material that what is yeah, what is a piece? Okay, um Queen G three, rook takes f one, king takes f one, rook f eight, and I'm a little bit unsure. But I think I'm avoiding losing even in that case. Okay, let's just do it. Queen G three. Rook E seven. Ah, okay, so they're guarding the checkmate laterally. Okay, this can't be good though. I can play rook takes f5. Rook takes f5. E takes f5. E takes f5. Now I have a bishop on e5, queen on g3, pawn on h4, and isn't queen g5 checkmate? You know, they, they don't have any minor pieces anymore. Where's their queen? It's on d2. Ah, that's the wrinkle. They can trade. Okay, should we just trade? There's gotta be more. Oh wait, bishop f4 wins the queen, right? Yeah, bishop f4. Bishop f4 check. Queen takes f4. Yeah, I love it, queen takes f4. Queen takes f4 check. King g7. Okay, they're down a queen, but they're still playing. Um. Okay, queen g5 check. Queen g5 check. King f8. King f8. I have a bishop on b3. Um, should I just call this game a quits? Let me know. Yeah, I want, I want to check the chat. Just see. Should I call this game a quits? I, I think I'm up so much material. I'm not sure if it's worth playing this out. Um, sorry. Everything's so bright. Um... Okay, I don't see anything in the chat. Yeah, let me know if you're you're bored of this game. I think it's uh, close to checkmate, so could wrap it up. I'm up like a queen. I don't think I would be losing this game. I just have to remember all my pieces and make it happen. But I didn't hear I didn't hear anything in the chat. Let's see. Fine either way. Okay, I do want to give people a chance to challenge me actually. So I am gonna wrap it up. Oh, I'm literally one move from checkmate. I I. I Sneak, snuck a peek at the board, but this is checkmate. Queen G8, checkmate, checkmate. White is victorious. Okay, all right. Yeah, I wanted to play this move, but I was so concerned that I, I might not have the bishop um, free on that diagonal. This was a 40 move game, and there were a few slips, um, but in general, like, this was a really good game, I think. I think I understood the idea as well, aside from a few things, like I didn't know I was castled, etc. Um, yeah, I was pretty happy with this. Thanks for uh, thanks for the encouragement in the chat, Snoozy. Appreciate it. This was yeah, this was a lot of mental effort though. This game took everything. Yeah, it really did. F remembering where everything is for forty moves, I think is like just maybe my best D4. ever for for Blendfold. So I'm I'm really happy with how this one went. Let me know. Yeah, if y'all are watching, all of you guys in the chat, uh, let me know if you're watching in blindfold mode or just directly on the stream itself, you can type in uh, exclamation point blindfold in the chat and um, yeah, Nightbot will give you a response that says how to watch it in blindfold mode. You can basically watch it in Lee Chess um, with me and you can set your configuration so that you're also watching it in blindfold mode. But yeah, this is it for me in terms of blind. I don't think I can do another blindfold game. This is um, really took a, a toll on me, but I'm going to analyze this game. And after that, if anyone wants to send me a challenge for some just casual games, I'm totally down to play. Um, so anyone uh, who's still stuck around, let me know. And 
Um, you can also challenge me using the uh, command exclamation point challenge in uh, the chat. So let's give this one a quick look um, for the time being. Oh, and if you're challenging me, um, let's play let's play a blitz game, not bullet. Um, my system is a bit laggy with Streamlabs going on in the background, so um, I'm always concerned that I'm gonna like lose on time or something. But let's take this off. I don't need this anymore today. Okay, so I was, according to the computer, up for most of the game, um, like the second part of the game, and yeah, I do see some little bit of uh, some hills and mountains here, so not smooth sailing all the way, but I was never, you know, even if I made a mistake, I didn't lose the advantage. I was still up, um, so that's good. That's good. It's a good uh, sign. Blindfold chest is definitely one of those techniques that, um, yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. So I will be doing much more of these uh, and also some other types of tactics along the way as well. Um, but this is something that you can expect more from me. If you guys like this content, definitely do let me know. Um, I would love to know what types of content you guys like, what types of ones you find instructive for your own improvement, what ones you find entertaining just to watch. Um, so yeah, do definitely let me know in the chat. <laughs> Okay, so in this game we had a d4, e6. e6, as I mentioned, there's this funny quote from some famous chess person that, uh, yeah, if you play e6 and they don't play e4, you have already exposed them as someone who doesn't play the best move in the position, which c4. is me here, I guess. Queen f6. Queen f6 is, yeah, really crazy. It dictated a lot of what went on um, with the, uh, you know, me trying to harass the queen, me trying to trap it, but... There was nothing. I mean, there's this has never been a game played with this position on Lee Chess. That's you know crazy to me. Like to come up with a novelty on move two, uh, with a move that seems weird, but it's not like I would expect no one to have ever played this. It's kind of crazy. Um, okay, so let's close the opening explorer and just knight f three. Get on d five. So it likes Bishop my approach. D5, queen f five, e three, f six. Yeah, and nothing too striking. I'm not f6 is a slightly strange move. It gives the queen even fewer options, but I'm not able to strike immediately. Um, and yeah, I mean this bishop should really get developed so they can, you know, get get castled sooner rather than later. Okay. Bishop h4. Bishop h4. Knight d7. Knight d7. H3. Yeah, I mean here I was looking for some idea like this. Knight um, d7. The line I wanted to talk about in the game was bishop d3. And if Bishop they go D3. queen g4, queen g4. I wanted to somehow trap this guy, but I couldn't find a way, so I didn't. And yeah, I guess computer is saying that my approach was totally viable. All right, where are we though? Short castle. Okay, I think I jumped ahead a little bit. I don't think too much happened there. Um, g5. G5. Bishop g3. Yeah, for a while I wasn't sure whether this pawn was here or here or here. But, okay, I guess I was right that it was on c7. Yeah, and my plan kind of here was I wanted to move this knight away and basically ask this bishop, where do you want to go? If you go here, you're vulnerable. If you go here, you know, you're, you're not, you're not going to be able to get the knight there. It's a bit un unharmonious for, for black. And yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that this is already so bad that it's plus four for me. I think that's a really, that's a really, uh, yeah, shocking assessment of the position, I would say. Rook c8. Okay, and here I have something crushing. What is the move? e5. Ah, okay. Because I, I didn't recognize that this pawn here has only one defender. So e5, and if e5. he plays, I don't know, maybe takes. I think I'm takes taking e5. here. And his structure is totally destroyed. Maybe I can even take with the pawn here. Let's just get the computer moving. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Nice breaking down of this structure. This, uh... These dark squares. Oh yeah, of course. Also, bishop takes here is attacking this rook, and what are you doing? You're losing uh, at least a rook, uh, or I guess you can block with the knight, and you're only losing a knight. But not a great situation to be in. Okay. E5. Rook c8. And here I went for my plan, which is also bishop decent. Bishop d6. E5. Bishop f8. Yeah. Okay. Here I I totally failed to recognize this this pawn was on f6. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was blindfolded, and I, I, the whole game I thought somehow this pawn was on f7, and this you know this pawn was guarding the square. So I totally 
missed a lot of the dynamics of the position that were introduced because this pawn was here. Um, and there was like literal tension between my two pawns and this pawn would be hanging if I somehow exchanged these guys. Sorry, if I exchanged these guys. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Here it wanted me to go for a repositioning of the knight, I guess back into maybe e4. <laughs> yeah, it must have been really hilarious. I was like trying to, you know, play this knight away and I wasn't castled yet. I was trying to move my queen from here to here and there was like a piece in the way. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, pretty funny for sure. Rook AC1. Okay. A6. Knight H2. A6. Okay. Something here. Bishop E4 is the move. What is the idea? Bishop if we play E4. Knight E5, say? Knight D5. I guess I'm taking on B7, yeah? Let's just see what it has in mind. Okay, computer's a bit slow, um, but yeah, I guess I guess the idea that it has in mind is takes here and maybe even takes here and really opening up the structure. He is so underdeveloped that I can just uh, yeah trade. Look forward to pawns, uh, you know, being creepy crawly in the center. And yeah, okay, I I don't think I need to look too much into that, but let's continue. Bit knight d five, a six knight h two. Okay. This plan is, yeah, decent, but I, I failed to recognize that there was tension here and moving the knight away allows them to... F takes g5, f5. Um, sorry, I it jumped a bunch. I, I'm not sure where I was. Um, yeah, I failed to recognize this tension here, which is, yeah, okay. Something to keep in mind. King f7, f4. King g7, okay. f takes g5. Yeah, this plan was crazy. I don't know what they were trying to do when they gave up this set of pawns and... You know, they gave up a piece and everything was sort of crumbling in this position, I would say. Bishop e7. G takes f6 check. Bishop takes f6. E takes f6 check. Okay, yeah. Knight takes f6. Bishop e5. This is Knight all... d5. Yeah, just smooth sailing from here, I think. I didn't blow anything. I basically just found ways to win you know, this pawn and maybe also win a piece here and just mount the pressure. This pin is... A nuisance for black to deal with and so yeah, I was pretty happy with my technique here in uh, trying to get at this but also yeah maybe what I did was a little crazy was I getting my queen trapped queen takes b7 queen takes b7 could they do something like rook here is my queen not getting rook trapped oh, okay I have a6 I can take here queen takes a6 what rook I was worried B8. about was something like this and queen a7 maybe my queen somehow gets like trapped like, there's not many squares left for the queen, so... Yeah, I realize I can maybe come here now, but all of this is extremely scary when you can't see what's going on, so... Um, definitely... Yeah, if I had understood that this construction looked like this, and in my mind, um, I probably wouldn't have even gone for this. B8. Yeah, this queen is takes B7. really bold, right? I have an advantage here, and I wanted to basically create some construction in which I could you know, get this and this, sorry, get uh, get this knight off the board. Sorry, all these arrows. Um, take this knight and yeah, expose this pin. But this, yeah, this method was extremely risky and I guess it was a gamble that paid off, but yeah, it could have very easily gone gone badly for me. Okay. Bishop, B, Bishop takes b5, queen takes a2. Okay, so here, yeah, it's already winning for me. Um, I don't think what I played was bad. I, I basically saw that I could bishop here and then take here, and then this knight would be un uh, undefended. And I play bishop here, and there's not a quick tempo to defend this knight somehow with another piece like this, because the queen's also hanging. So uh, that was nice. I did like that. Bishop c4. Or, queen I did, a5. Yeah, I did like that. I saw that in the position. Bishop takes d5. Rook c f8. Okay. And yeah, I didn't even notice here that there was stuff like this in the air or this. Um, I guess it was a little bit yeah. Tunnel vision. I, I I see this pin and I'm like, okay, I can really exploit it. So I just get this bishop to safety and how are they stopping this move next? Also, at the whole game, I thought there was a G pawn here and I was like, you know, this pawn is here. I got to watch out, not put anything on this square or this square, but there was not a G pawn. This G pawn was gone and it went away when I took here and they took here and I think I won it somehow. But okay, let's keep going. Bishop B3. Okay. Rook hg8. Yeah, there's some force checkmate here, but 
I'm not some. Maybe Timur Gariev could see this. Checkmate in eight. Um, well, casually, like getting a nice run in too. But yeah, this is. Queen f3. My, my, my idea was I wanted to bring the queen here and, you know, maybe just. Uh, as Yasser Sarawan, the commentator, says, like, just tickle this knight. Ask it what it wants to do. It's a very funny phrase, like tickling a piece. Like, I don't know what that means, but. Okay. King h6. King h6. Bishop takes f6. Yeah, yeah, not much to see here. Did I execute a maiden 7? Almost. I. I guess I made a couple inaccuracies, but okay. Queen d2, rook c3, rook e8, bishop e5, rook g5. Yeah, here I was worried. I don't know what, what I was thinking about, but I thought that this was not a possible uh, move in the position. But yeah, it's just killing. Like now that I see it on the board, like bishop there and you can resign. h4. Rook f5. Yeah, what I was scared about in the game was like if I play this and Queen g3. If they take. Rook takes f1 check. Well, first of all, I didn't see that I have knight takes. But I was thinking I could play king h2, which is not a legal move, first of all. But I guess if once I realized that, I might have been like, okay, I'm so scared. I gotta take this king way. Takes f1. And I was worried I would actually get mated here. But the good news is this queen cannot enter any of these squares. This one is covered by the bishop. Uh, this one is covered by two pieces, and then this one is covered by my queen. So, yeah, I wouldn't be getting mated, I don't think. But, yeah, definitely a bit of a, a cold shower if Rook you realize one check. once they take here that you can't play king h2. And you panic, maybe. But, okay, I mean, the position itself was, was fine. So, cool. Very, very uh, fun game. I, I enjoyed myself. And this is one of those things that I learned a lot from as well. So I'll definitely be revisiting this training technique in the near future. If you like this content and you like similar types of content, definitely do give my video a like, as well as subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and follow me on Twitch. Cool, I'll see you guys in the next one.